the skills and talent trees have finally been officially revealed for the three new commanders coming to rise of kingdoms that is bobber margaret and heraclius so today we're going to go over all of them and i'm going to let you guys know what i think about these three new commanders coming into the game what's going on guys cheers this is 64 ounces can you guess what's in here all right first let's start with bobber okay you can see here that he is an engineering versatility and attack commander now we've actually seen engineering commanders before kvk specifically we've also seen them with the attack tree as well these talents to be honest sound like the worst possible talents I can imagine I mean I can't think of a worse I mean you yeah you could say like integration right that might actually be worse but versatility is historically useless and the attack tree is really only good on commanders that are really good at punishing you if you actually end up swarming them so for example this works really well on commanders like Attila but it doesn't work nearly as well on commanders like Chuck or even Alex or Ramses. So I'm really concerned about the power level of the attack tree on an engineering commander. If you guys didn't know, the engineering tree essentially buffs siege units. So this is a siege focused commander. Now let's take a look at the skills. Okay. Now, one thing that they omitted in this video is the actual numbers for each of the skills, which is really frustrating because it makes it really difficult to tell if these commanders are going to be good or bad but we can at least understand what they're attempting to do in the open field and what the role of that commander is going to be so for example the active skill here says deal skill damage to a target troop with a certain damage factor the skill can only be used in ranged mode so unless you're putting bobber in a v formation army this skill does nothing this does absolutely nothing so you do not want to use this commander in a mixed army there's not going to be a world where you use like a Guan Yu primary with Bobber secondary to just add stats or something this commander is only for v formation and that is it if you don't have good armaments for v formation i i, I don't know okay now this to me uh, i imagine is going to be a relatively high damage factor considering that there is a very strict restriction here like you have to be in range mode and also it's only a single target so not that exciting no debuffs or anything like that the next skill says increase the attack of this commander's siege units by x percent and their defense by x percent this commander's troops deal X percent more range normal attack damage now again we end up in a scenario where you know is this 10 percent and 10 percent or is it 30 percent and 30 percent we really have no idea I will say though that since we are talking about siege these numbers ought to be very high otherwise this is going to be relatively useless in case you guys didn't know or if you forgot the way that the uh, troop types work in this game is that obviously cavalry beats archers archers beats infantry infantry beats cavalry we all know that but all three of these actually beat siege so siege is literally the worst possible troop type for actual combat for actual fighting other players but not only do siege take more damage from every other troop type but they also deal less damage to every other troop type so right out of the gate these commanders are fighting an uphill battle so right out of the gate commanders like bobber and like margaret and and even Torgny and wafura that are kvk specific commanders these numbers have to be higher than you would expect for it to give the same result for the other troop types okay also range normal attack damage i mean this is how you're going to be dealing virtually all of your damage so this i think is a really solid buff but again it could be five percent it could be ten percent we don't really know his third skill says in ranged mode this commander's troop takes x percent less damage from normal attacks ranged normal attacks from this commander's troop have a ten percent chance to deal additional skill damage to the target troop this effect can trigger once every five seconds now whether the high end of this skill is 10 percent or 30 percent we really don't know but that's going to determine whether or not this is useful because the thing is when you're in ranged mode it takes time to disassemble your ranged tower and in that time you can be absolutely pummeled you are essentially feeding the enemy free kills if you are caught in tower form so this is an attempt to mitigate the amount of damage that you're going to be taking but i mean if you're getting swarmed down like let's say you're behind a pass and you're in uh, in v formation you're in ranged mode and you're dealing damage and then the pass goes down and then you have you know 50 marches rush through the pass you're going to be swarmed down instantly so i think in order to really move the needle here this has to be a very high number and then the direct damage factor is going to be interesting this is essentially like Harold's skill or like alexander the great's second skill but it's dealing damage at range which i think is a huge advantage and definitely really interesting now again is this going to be 500 damage factor or 1500 damage factor we don't know but this could actually be a game changer for sure i mean imagine jumping into tower formation and you just get a nice instant proc 1500 damage and then you you disassemble 
shield and run away I mean it would be a nice way to chip away the enemy health the fourth skill says increases the health of this commander siege units by X percent when taking damage this commander siege units have a 10 percent chance to gain X percent increased defense and X percent increased damage for three seconds this can trigger once every five seconds so again we're seeing a relatively low cooldown here siege health is again going to be very important for the effectiveness of the siege units because they're already at such a significant disadvantage and a 10 percent chance to be a little bit more tanky and deal damage is nice especially because this applies to when taking damage now the downside here is that if you're pummeling the target in ranged mode you're not gonna have a chance to just deal bonus damage right this has to be when you're hit this this could be when you take range damage as well so keep that in mind but yeah I, I'm really curious here like you know is this increased defense and damage going to save you in the event that you get swarmed down in tower mode I feel like that's probably not going to be the case and finally the expertise says increases the attack of this commander siege units by x percent whenever they use an active skill their troop will gain x rage per second for the next three seconds this bus buff can trigger once every five seconds this is a nice little rage engine here and I think that it's definitely gonna be worth getting the expertise if you decide to actually invest in bobber bonus attack on siege is probably the least valuable thing that you would want from your siege I just don't see a world where that's gonna really move the needle either but again this could be a lot of rage I don't really know but here we actually get a chance to see the active skill of bobber here which is going to be really cool you see already that there's four golden hand cannons behind him and then boom they launch and a nice little explosion what up Asya? at the end of the day bobber for me is a little bit underwhelming I think that the attack tree is not great the versatility tree is not great siege are already at a massive disadvantage and I think bobbers uh, he's going to shine obviously in ranged mode that's going to be the only way that you can really use him but you're going to have to set up your army in a really strategic position because even if he has bonus you know 10 percent bonus defense all these extra stats bonus damage when he's hit all that you know reduce normal attack damage taken those sorts of things I don't think that they're going to be able to compensate for the massive disadvantage that siege already have plus siege are very slow running away you know it takes forever even if you are able to get out of ranged mode it takes a long time to run away now with that being said having multiple bobbers you know if you're let's say your alliance all invests in him and they all expertise him having a line of him in the back row dealing massive skill damage to a single target Target. this could be really powerful this could also help tremendously with defeating a rally for example I mean now that you can deal skill damage at range it's going to be huge and also a 10 percent chance to proc more damage additional damage on one of his skills here there's going to be a really niche use for this commander I think and again it depends on how high these numbers actually are but at the end of the day I'm not that excited for this commander so let's move on to someone else now next let's talk about Margaret now the first thing we have to note is that Bobber comes in the Wheel of Fortune okay Margaret however comes in her own event called the Margaret Invictus event and this is going to be a commander that if you complete this event as a free-to-play player you will be able to unlock her okay so this is a legendary commander that free-to-play players can get their hands on at no cost which is really good I like that there's also a $20 tier here where I think you get an additional like 40 or 50 sculptures or something like that so maybe you can get her first skill to like three or four with just 20 bucks so I mean I guess that's cool I don't know how we're gonna be able to get her after this event is over right is this gonna be a Lubu scenario I don't think so what I would love to see for Margaret is that they eventually put her in replace of Ethelfled I think that would be huge I think players have been asking for this for a very long time players you know we've had Ethelfled expertise for years obviously if you're a new player you would want Ethelfled over you know a ranged commander like this but once Ethelfled is completed I feel like it should be a trigger in game to switch Ethelfled for Margaret I think that would be awesome I think that's a good way to give back to the community whether Lilith does that or not I think you know I think probably unlikely unfortunately but even still I think it's really cool that this is a free way that you can get uh, at least unlock a legendary commander and for those of you that are low spenders this is a free way to get a five dollar bundle to pop with 10 universals so hey that's cool now let's take a closer look at Margaret she's an engineering versatility and support commander now the support tree I do like more than the attack tree just in general because you're going to be generating more rage with that support tree assuming that you're not swarmed down obviously the attack tree has ways to regenerate rage if you are swarmed but you rather not be swarmed as engineering so I think that this is this is a, an improvement over bobber her active skill says for three seconds range normal attacks from this commander's troops deal X percent more damage and deal additional skill damage with X damage factor this skill can only be used in ranged mode so once again we're seeing a commander that is absolutely useless in any other army you must use this in V formation and this means that Margaret and bobber are essentially going to be a match made in heaven for the time 
time being until we get more engineering commanders in the game right now the only pair the only thing you can do with margaret and the only thing you can do with bobber is pair them together I, I really feel that way i don't see any other any other use for these commanders at all so if you invest in one you basically have to invest in the other they come together so keep that in mind now with margaret we don't know how we're going to be able to get more sculptures of her after this event is over so that essentially means you're gonna have to use universals on her entirely unless they give her another give us another way no idea anyway i think that this skill is you know it's fine it, it depends on how much normal attack damage bonus is it 30 percent? is it 50 percent? is it 15 percent? it really depends but i do think it pairs nicely with bobber right he does instant proc damage she's gonna boost damage over x amount of, of seconds so it's it's nice and also you do have a, an additional skill damage here as well which is which is cool her second skill says increases the attack of this commander siege units by x percent and their march speed by x percent now this is something that was missing on bobber so again you, you're gonna need these commanders paired together because bobber is going to need that march speed desperately siege are extremely slow in the game ranged attacks from this commander's troops have a 10 percent chance to increase its normal attack damage by x percent for three seconds five second cooldown so again we see more additional damage factor a 10 percent chance to trigger and we're we're buffing the normal attack damage once again now we saw normal attack damage buff on bobber as well so we're stacking these together at this point and again i think that these commanders not only do they have to be paired together but i think that they do have some nice synergy here as well the third skill says in ranged mode this commander's troops deal x percent extra ranged skill damage when their troop deals skill damage it has a 10 percent chance to reduce the target troops march speed by x percent for three seconds this can trigger once every five seconds so just like Yi song a boosts skill damage this is going to boost skill damage for ranged skills only does that mean that bobber is the only commander in the game that this can buff at the time of recording this that seems to be the case he is the only commander that deals skill damage in ranged formation correct unless they're talking about like the additional skill damage random proc stuff from margaret and bobber as well who knows but when their troop deals skill damage there's a 10 percent chance to reduce the march speed this is interesting because you're already far away from them right so typically in a murder ball if you hit somebody with a march speed reduction it's it's because you're fighting and then you run away here you're slowing them down before they even get to you which could be good depending on what this march speed reduction actually is if this is a very high number then it's going to slow down enemies coming through a pass for example and i think that that could be kind of interesting slowing enemies at range in general is an interesting concept to me as well but again it's just going to be 10 percent or it's going to be 50 percent that's going to make a big difference to the effectiveness of this actual skill otherwise you know reducing the march speed of a target that's not even hitting you i mean it sort of supports your alliance members that might be hitting them but you're in ranged mode it's going to take you so long to get out of ranged mode anyway that they're still probably going to reach you right or fourth skill says increase the attack of this commander's troop by x percent range normal attacks from this commander's troop have a 10 percent chance to reduce the target's defense by x percent for three seconds five second cooldown again we're seeing more attack on this commander which is not that great but here it says damage bonus so i don't know if that's a typo or if this is going to be changed to normal attack damage or if it's going to be all damage but here it says attack so here I, I really have no idea clearly they didn't put the numbers in for any of these commanders so that means that they're still not done working these out so these things could change attack to me is lame we've already seen attack and we've seen attack on bobber as well so i'd rather this be normal attack damage or all damage to be honest with you reducing defense is nice so this commander really is debuffing that target at range slowing them down reducing their defense she's providing utility at a distance which i think is interesting how useful that's going to be is going to depend on how big these numbers are but i don't know man i'm not really seeing the value in this commander either let's move on to the expertise and it says increases the defense of this commander siege units by x percent when taking damage this commander's troop have a 10 percent chance to heal itself with a healing factor and a five second cooldown so if we look at this as a pair for bobber right bobber is reducing the normal attack damage that you are taking he's reducing the target rage there's a 10 percent chance to reduce their defense if i remember correctly as well and here it says when you're being attacked you're, you're going to heal yourself so these commanders do try to have a way to mitigate the fact that 
you know when they get swarmed they're going to be mega punished for it but again siege are at such a disadvantage that i feel like these numbers have to be so high to compensate for that and the devs are going to have to really find a balance to make sure that this is balanced in the game if they go too far then it's going to be like they're dealing mad damage at range and that's just going to be scary and unfair and kind of stupid but if it's not high enough then these commanders are literally useless they're literally targeting in wafura that you have to spend money on like no one's going to do that no one's going to care but the unique thing about margaret and with bobber is that in home kingdom or in kvk this is really the only good use for siege i mean think about it this is the only use for siege in war we officially have a use for siege whether these commanders are exceptionally good or not this is how you use siege in war now and i think that's interesting maybe that's going to be uh you know something that only whales consider doing right maybe free to play players just kind of ignore siege for now let the whales invest in it let them get the benefits of having you know maybe their seventh march is a bobber and margaret and they're just chipping damage away at, at range i don't know but whether these commanders are good or bad it is the only way to get war value out of siege now of course you could stuff up flag or pass with siege or whatever but to go on the offense is what i'm saying now here we see her active skill she has her little uh her little staff thing pops up above her head and then boom it's kind of cool it's kind of cool i guess i i, I don't know next we have heraclius okay leadership garrison defense eh, i don't know dog that doesn't seem that good to me but this is a mightiest governor commander okay this is a mightiest governor leadership commander really interesting stuff there taking a look at the active skill it says deals direct damage to up to five nearby targets damage dealt is reduced by 15 percent for each additional target this skill also grants this commander's troop a mighty shield for three seconds now this is the first time we're seeing the term mighty shield we've obviously seen plenty of shields in the game but a mighty shield appears to be a specific buff for heraclius himself i do believe that this is a five target circular aoe i think we'll take a look at that in a skill animation in a second but this does appear to be circular aoe so that's really interesting next skill says increases the health of this commander's troop by x percent when serving as a garrison commander normal attacks from this commander's troop have a 10 percent chance to increase its own counter attack damage by x percent for three seconds and an even higher amount i assume if garrisoning your own city this effect can trigger once every eight seconds so relatively long cooldown there the fact that you get the health bonus no matter what is good that means that so far with these two skills they both will do something in open field fights right you have the circular aoe and you have the health bonus now the counter attack damage bonus only works in garrison so that's unfortunate but hey it is what it is and the fact that there's an emphasis here on city defense is nice now we've seen the devs talk about this before they've talked about how there's really been massive power creep in the specific rally types right like uh, you know back in the day we had Attila Takeda rallies and now we have Attila Nevsky rallies or we have Nevsky Joan rallies right like it's just a whole new level and there really hasn't been that sort of power creep when it comes to city garrisons right so here we're seeing a city garrison specific commander that also has some use in regular garrisons so that's kind of cool his third skill increases the skill damage of this commander's troops by x percent when they use an active skill their troop gains a mighty shield with a specific damage factor or or a different number if garrisoned to your city for three seconds this effect can again trigger once every eight seconds so another long cooldown the skill damage bonus here is what really is intriguing to me because again YSG has a plain skill damage bonus and that this could be that right he has up to 50 percent bonus skill damage now if we see something remotely close to that that's going to be huge right because think about you know if we have a circular AoE that gives you a shield and bonus health to any troop type and a bunch of extra skill damage i mean is this going to be ysg 2.0 right now i know again there's a lot of stuff here that focuses specifically on garrisons and that's fine but when you think about what ysg does he doesn't really do that much he does massive aoe damage and bonuses skill damage and a little bit of a rage engine there with a 10 percent chance right here you know if his numbers are the same as ysg's and we're swapping rage engine for bonus health i mean hey that could actually be useful in the open field considering he's leadership doesn't matter what troop type he has so really this number it depends on what these numbers are but this is an additional way to gain a shield in a garrison which is good and this bonus skill damage you know is this going to be five percent is it going to be 20 percent is going to be 50 percent right that's going to really make or break this commander i think because if this is YSG tier this is going to be insane and finally the last skill says increases the defense and attack by X percent when garrisoned in a stronghold or city so that portion unfortunately those stats will not be used in the open field however when their troop is attacked while it has a shield it has a 30 percent chance 
to deal direct damage to the attacking troop with an X damage factor and an eight second cooldown. Now, if you remember his active skill also gives you a shield and this will apply even in the open field. So despite him having a way to gain a shield only in garrisons, he still has a way to gain a shield all by himself in the open field, which means that his fourth skill still has a chance to pop that, uh, direct damage factor to that target. Now, the 30% chance here is very high. This is just like with, uh, with Harold, for example. However, there's a condition here that you must have a shield active. So to me, this sounds like a commander that you want to pair with somebody who already provides shields as well, right? So I'm thinking about CPO prime. I'm thinking about Martel, right? These are commanders that because they provide their own shields, this could be huge. Also keep in mind that Sargon gives you a shield as well. And the fact that Heraclius has circular AOE to five targets pairs really nicely with this odd debuff. So I think Sargon primary with Heraclius secondary could be a very sneaky way to just deal massive damage in the open field. You have single target proc damage. If you have a shield up 30% chance on Heraclius, he's giving you extra health. He's giving you bonus skill damage. And his expertise says commanders troops take X percent less damage from normal attacks. This is again, applicable in all scenarios. This is applicable in the open field as well. So reduce normal attack damage is huge. If this commander's troops contain at least three different troop types, damage taken is reduced by an extra X percent. So this essentially you can run him in the open field with it, with mixed troops. Yes, you certainly you could do that, but this also means in the city, right? If he is garrisoning your city, of course, you're going to have more than three different troop types. Uh, and that's going to be really nice. Reducing the damage you take on a city rally is going to be huge. The other thing we have to talk about is uh, the Honda Tadakatsu pairing, right? They're both leadership commanders perhaps you could actually do a mixed army with these two commanders right we have aoe on both of them we have skill damage on both of them bonus skill damage on both of them i mean hey this could actually be a really interesting pair and a way to use multiple troop types now again the effectiveness of heraclius is going to come down to what are these actually like what are these actual numbers here right what are these numbers actually we only have placeholders and if they're if they're on par with recent commanders we've seen this is going to be a really good commander if they are reduced to, you know then he's not going to be that great to be honest with you but he could be a nice shoe in secondary to deal nice aoe now here we see his skill animation popping off and there is in fact a circle so if we resume it looks like boom this is sick by the way you have five different golden warriors on a horseback summon up out of the ground and then they deal damage in all areas so it is in fact a circular aoe just like a song a that looks like a relatively large circle as well which i think is going to make him actually potentially usable which is going to be awesome the downside however is that this is a mightiest governor commander now i don't understand why they split up the range commanders right so you have bobber comes from the wheel of fortune and then you have margaret from an event and then heraclius comes in as the mightiest governor for bobber like why didn't they put margaret as the mightiest governor and heraclius you get for free i feel like that would have been awesome that would have been huge right but uh yeah unfortunately that's not the case now really quick there is also a new set a new legendary equipment set called the lupine vestments this is a six piece siege set we don't really know the details too much obviously these are placeholder numbers over here they also give you infantry stats and cav stats on the weapon but they still give you siege base bonus stats so these this is mainly going to be a siege set although i will say this could actually be pretty interesting for city defense depending on what the extra stats here are but one thing that i think is funny is that they've introduced a new set into the game for siege specifically legendary siege set and they didn't use bone like come on man you were you, you finally had an, a reason to, get, to have us use legendary bone guys there's literally no use for legendary bones i need you to understand that legendary bones are worse than any other bone in the game because you can't do anything with them they're literally the worst and they had an opportunity to have us use them for something useful and they just they just were like nope we're not we're not going to give you free value it's kind of annoying but anyway um here we can see we have more mixed stats as well but yeah new siege set this set is going to be exclusively for the time of recording this for bobber and for margaret other than that there's no real need to get this set now my opinion on these new commanders is that it's it's really difficult to come to a conclusion right we don't have the actual numbers of these skills and we've never really seen something like this before now we saw Torgny and Wafur and they came into uh, as a KBK specific thing really those were just the beta versions of these commanders if we're being completely honest right they were just testing the the, the idea of range and with the engineering tree but it's hard to say right because again siege are at such a disadvantage against all other troop types that 
the numbers here have to be huge also the the skills only work for margaret and bobber in ranged formation so you can't really even open field fight with these commanders so there's a very niche use for these uh, commanders um but it is still a a offensive way to use siege and we've never seen that before and that could be really useful now I personally think that I'm not that interested in these commanders unless we see that their numbers are insane, right? If they're insane, then hey, it is what it is. But um, we're gonna have to start to craft like a new, we're gonna have to craft, craft more equipment, right? Like nobody has siege equipment right now. So the fact that, you know, even if they are good, this is still gonna be like a whale investment, it feels like, right? Um, and on top of that, of course, there is the, the advantage for free to play players of being in ranged mode and dealing damage at range uh as a way to essentially help the alliance without good commanders like right now you could put any two commanders in ranged mode and and deal damage at range and that's fine now you're not going to be able to deal skill damage and it is what it is but it's still a way for free to play players to help in range mode and i think that that's good this will amplify that tremendously but is it going to be worth it for free to play players and will they be able to actually craft a good set for them probably not the other thing that's worth noting here is that we officially have a good use for all those garbage armaments you've been getting that are providing siege stats so hopefully you held on to some of the good siege stat armaments because you're probably going to need them if you're going to be investing in these commanders now truthfully for me it feels like the developers are trying to shoehorn in a use for siege in a game that has spent four years ignoring siege right the game has been built around siege being trash for a long time and they're kind of trying to force the fact that there's going to be a fourth unit that we're going to be caring about now i don't really think so man i don't think so again the buffs here have to be huge and they're so slow i i don't know man like i just don't really care about these commanders i mean I, i'm just going to be honest the the numbers if they're huge then great maybe i'll invest in them but if they're just average then they're essentially useless to me I will say that I'm very excited for Heraclius because he looks like he could be a very universal investment that you could throw behind pretty much anybody and that would be really useful especially for free-to-play players sort of like Honda Tadakatsu is right now except with circular AoE which is just massive and his skill damage bonus isn't 57 times after leaving your like that was such a stupid idea for Honda anyway this commander I'm the most excited about he seems cool his animation is sick the last thing that I want to talk about I guess is these new uh I guess these are called artifacts there's one artifact for each troop type uh, notably there's not one for siege there's one for infantry cavalry and archers and this is going to be available in a specific kvk and essentially you get one you get to pick one for that kvk so you know if you're a cavalry main you'll pick cavalry that sort of thing it gives you a small attack buff but really what it does is it makes all commanders in that army have that troop type so essentially if you have a martel alex and you give him the cavalry artifact those are now cavalry commanders so that's really interesting this is going to throw a wrench in a bunch of different builds anyway guys that's going to do it for today let me know in the comment section below how you feel about these three new commanders do you think that they're going to be useful in meta is this going to change rise of kingdoms forever or do you think it's just going to be like kind of a the the cool thing for the moment and then people are going to realize that it's kind of lame and who cares i'd love to hear from you in the comment section below while you're down there drop a thumbs up on the video it really helps out the channel a ton it pushes this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it if you're new here subscribe to the channel and click that bell to be notified the next time that i upload a rise of kingdoms video and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace